My name is Kristen Brown. And in honor of the World AIDS HIV Day, this is my story. I am 35 years old and the mother of two wonderful children, ages 17 and 20. I went to Mali Girls RSC until Standard 3, to Napuna Government Secondary, um, Primary, sorry, um, up to Standard 5. I went to Moms for Literacy and Choices La Hoketa for Teenage Moms. I came from a family background where it is every Sunday we went to church, so I always knew who God was. My parents were separated when I was the age of 11 years. At that time, I was, I, was, I was really hurt. I felt traumatized by the separation of my parents. I became rebellious to my mother um, and just wanted to do my own thing. By the age of 13, I ran away from home. After running away, I, I, I met my son's father, and he took me in. I was unable to come out much because I didn't, I didn't want the public to, to, see, to see me. I, I, I was at the point where I, I already ran, ran away from home, so I didn't want people to see me to know where I was you know, or who I was with or anything like that, not wanting to put anybody in trouble. I didn't have a, a, a place of work to go to because I was a minor. So I didn't, I didn't come out at all. At the age of 14, I was pregnant with my son. When my son's father found out of my pregnancy, he put me out and I was on the streets. I met an individual who took me in and he, he this, and this is where I contracted the virus. In the year 2002, I was diagnosed with the HIV virus. I started showing symptoms of the virus. Um, I was constantly tired and there was a, a gland that was very painful that came up behind my right ear. And that is how I realized that something was wrong. Um, my mom took, us to the, took me to the, um, the, the doctor and after two months, at that point in time, now we have rapid, we have rapid tests for HIV, but at that point in time, I had to wait two months to get back my, my results for the test that I did. And it was, it, so, so just imagine you having to, 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 to go home and you, you, you take a test like this and, and, it, and we're waiting for two months down the road to find out, well, what it is, well, how, you know, how it is you, 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 you're going to deal with the results for this. You know, so, um, that is, that, is, that is how I find out I was, I was diagnosed. That was the year I find out I was diagnosed. Um, mom, after two months of anxious, anxiously waiting on the results, um, that results came back um, positive. That results came back positive. At that point in time, I didn't, I didn't know how to feel at that point in time. Um, mom... Mom just looked at me in shock when the doctor revealed, revealed that status to me. Um, I was unable to cry. I didn't cry. I, didn't, I, was, I, I just remember being kind of like emotionless at that point in time. I felt like, like, like I was dead inside. You know, my shoulders just like, like drop it went down because um, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know how to feel at that point in time. After I was diagnosed with the HIV virus, I, I became, I will, I will call myself 
I will call myself a monster, a, 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 a really ugly thing, something that, that, that it, it wasn't, because of the hurt that I was feeling, I became selfish, I became unfair, unreasonable, unthoughtful. I became something that, that wasn't supposed to be there. I was really con inconsiderate and also a, 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 um, a, a searcher for, for, for love, somebody to love me because I felt like I was unloved. In the year 2011, I discovered that I, I, covered, um, I discovered who I contracted the virus from because um, there were three individuals that I was sexually active with before I found out of my HIV status. And I told each and every one of them of my discovery of the virus and Actually, two of them came and said that they had gotten tested and it was negative. I don't know because I never, I never saw that results or paperwork saying that they were actually positive. And one of the individuals just like disappeared. He did disappear off the face of the earth. That was the last time I saw or heard anything from him. And... I went out to a nightclub in 2011 and I saw the cousin of one of the individuals. He told me of the, the symptoms and, and illness of which his cousin was experiencing. So that is what made me realize that the symptoms that we, he, was, he, he was having was symptoms of HIV or AIDS virus. I, I asked immediately to see him because I, I just felt it inside that I had gotten the virus from him. So after finding out about getting the, vi getting the virus in 2002, it was, a, it was a, up until 2011 that I found Actually, I, I could say that found the person that I got it from. Um, when I went and uh, as, as I saw him, I, I, I couldn't understand what was happening to him because he was a person that was strong, a dark skin, you know, he was strapped, he had built, he had body, and I... I saw this person that was skin and bones, really, really small, lying on a bed. So I barely was able to recognize him. And this is where I decided that I was going to make sure that I would live. When I found the person that gave me HIV, I, the first thing I did was put my, ch my head onto his chest and cry because I was thinking that, you know, if this is what I was going to become or what I was going to look like after a certain time. I really thank God that there, are, there is so much put into place now for people living with HIV. Um, he, when I got there, there was actually nobody who tended or, or cared for this individual. He was in a room and he was really ill. So I decided to I don't even understand why. I could only say it's nothing but God caused me to, 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 to react in the way that I did. I still, I, I probably I understand it now. But at that point in time, I couldn't understand why it is I was doing what it is I was doing. When I saw him, I, I had to go back. Um, the, next, the very next day, 
the next morning, well, that was 4 o'clock in the morning, so it was, it was the very sad day. I got home and I told my mom of, you know, the, 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 what I discovered. And she was like, okay. I got home after partying all night. I cooked for my children and I packed a bowl of food and, and I went back down there to see him, taking him food. And I told him, I said, I don't like how you're, you're looking and I would like to take you to the doctor, you know, carry you to see a doctor. He said to me that, it was cancer he had. And something in my, in my, in, on the inside of me just said, no. No, it wasn't cancer that he had. So on Monday morning, I got up bright and early, went down to his home, picked him up, and took him to the, to the um, straight, straight into the clinic where I, I, I attend for the um, HIV virus. Straight into MRF, I, I took him there and we got in, we saw, well, I, I could say now that I am famous there because everybody knows me. I, you know, I, I bring a light to the place. I will talk to people. I will talk to everyone when I get there, you know. So when they saw me come in with him, they were like, um, a Christian, you know, so you're you, you bringing one? I said, yes, I, I brought in one. And I, we, we, we did all the testing. Well, they did all the testing on, on, on him to see, well, what it is was wrong, including a HIV test you know, at that point in time. Because they, you can carry in any, any, any individual or any partner to be tested. And you know, he was a partner of mine, so I, take him, I took him in asking for testing for him, seeing the condition that he was in. Um, we saw, he went in and, 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 and saw a doctor, and he didn't invite me to come in. I, I wasn't very, very pleased about that because I wanted to go in to hear what it is the doctors were saying. And after they saw him, they invited me into the other room to discuss what it is was happening, what was his situation at that point in time, and what it is where was he where he was at. Um, so I went and I sat down with the doctors, and they explained to me that he had full blown tuberculosis, and that he needed to be taken to the Cora Hospital immediately. So. We left there. Well, before I left, I asked the doctors, no, since, since I brought him in, you have to give me information. So I asked the doctors if the individual um, has ever been to the clinic before. And this is where it was close to me that he had been to the clinic once he joined and never came back. When we left, when we left the, the hospital there, I didn't, I mean, he was having a, 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 a bad and a rough day. He, he was, he, his body was really weak and I didn't want to add extra pressure on him at that point in time with revealing that I knew that he was the one who gave the virus to me. So I didn't tell him anything. I went to, Went and I took him home and during the drive and the journey home, I, during the drive and the journey home, I was explaining to him that, you know, he, he, I needed to take him to the Cora Hospital ASAP because he had tu tuberculosis. And he asked me, he said, he said, Chris, could I spend one more night home? I'm feeling tired. So I told him, I say, well, you know, you have other family members in the home that you, you, you're in and tuberculosis is a very serious disease. And um, your cousin recently had a baby, so I think that you should, you should go today. 
but not trying to pressure him, he actually got me to, you know, um, come back the next morning because I even, including myself, was tired. We had a long day. So we went to, we took him home, and the very next morning, very early, I went home to him, I packed a bag for him, and I took him to the Cora Hospital. I was the person that um, admitted him into the hospital, so they, they took all of my information in case anything was wrong with him or, thing or anything like that, you know? And after getting to the hospital, the individual and I started spending more time together. He was admitted in November, and we got closer and closer. He was unable to, to read or write, and I started telling him about, about God. Um, there was one time that my, my sister and I, one day that we, we visited, and we took him a Bible, and you know, he, he, he was unable to read and my sister um, sat down there and she read the Bible for him and from there we started to pray every day. You know, we, I, well every day I was there because I was really concerned about and really wanted to see that he come out of this and he come back. But God had a different plan for him. We... We spent we spend, we spend in reasonable enough time because, you know, it was mostly visiting hours. We get to share time together. And, but every day I, I, I attended that, that hospital, you know, talking to him. And then he, he, it, 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 it became, it, it ended up becoming in a direction where it is instead of I telling him about prayer, he telling me let's pray, you know? So we started doing that as something that, became, that, that, that it, it, it came in naturally. So every day when I left, before I left, we, we, we put it together. Um, one night I went home. I saw, I saw the individual um, at visiting hours the afternoon, the, the very the said afternoon. And I got home and sat in the gallery after 11 in the night. And while sitting out there, you know, my spirit really felt for him at that point in time. And I felt something like it passed and touched me on my face. And when I got that feeling, I got scared because it, it, I, and no breeze or anything like that didn't blow in that direction at that point in time. And then I looked up into the light. Um, the street light that I could have um, seen across the road. And like I saw the individual in the form of a spirit. So I ran inside and I told my, my mom of what I had just seen. And she said, Lee, don't worry. Everything is going to be all right. Pray and go in your bed. Um, I think it was after two that morning, the, the phone call came in that the individual, um, he caught three seizures during the course of the night and had to be admitted to Mount Hope Hospital. So instead of coming to Cora, I needed to go to Mount Hope. The next morning when I got to Mount Hope, um, his family um, we got there before me, so they, they went in and they saw him and so. And they said, but he's, he, he's not responding to anything that they are saying. His eyes were rolling back in his head and, you know, this kind of thing. So I, I got scared. When it was my turn to go in, I went in and he was completely normal. I was like, so I saw them say, you, you, your eyes rolling back in your head and you, I, I thought these people telling me all kind of thing, you know, wrong with you and thing. I said, he, he tell me, he said, what are you doing here? I said, no, it's not what are you doing here. It's what you do. What are you doing here? Because we end up promised to carry on the beach after, after we come out of here. 
Why, why, why are you here? He tell me, he say, I was waiting to see you. I say, what do you mean you're waiting to see me? Not understanding what it is he meant. By the time I got downstairs to the car park, because, you know, I, I was unable to spend a very long time because of the, his, his tuberculosis diagnosis, right? Um, when I got downstairs in the car park, before I drove out of that compound, I got the phone call that he had passed. In the year 2019, I was in a relationship with another individual who um, I told of my HIV status. And in wanting to leave that relationship, he enclosed my status I, to a uh, um, uh, person who I thought was a friend, even I thought was a friend, and that, that individual on the job um, told a senior supervisor about my status and the, the, room, the rumors rapidly start spreading around my place of work. In, on December 1st, for World AIDS HIV Day, in that year 2019 I saw that there were posters all over the compound you know um, saying that they were having a, a seminar for, for was HIV day and I walked up to the HIV unit and asked them if it is I could share my story so from there is where I at, but, and I was forced to do so because of the amount of discrimination that was taking place against me in the, work, in the workplace. So I felt like the only way I could really cope is by just completely talking about it and letting it out. After my status was revealed, I was a bit hurt. I, was, I felt alone. I, I, I was a little disappointed because of the person that that revealed it. Um, I felt like my world was coming to an end for a little bit, but mainly I felt like there was a big weight that was lifted off of my shoulders. There were many negatives and positives um, with the public knowing of this, my status. The, their responses. Um, one of the negative is that a lot of people use the, 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 the my status to, you know, to, to try to hurt me, to be unkind. And one of the positive things were that um, I was able to educate many people of the virus, many people who wasn't aware of a lot of things, I was able to share and teach them about the virus. What do I know of the HIV virus? Um, the HIV virus, what, what, what I learned of the virus is that it is not a death sentence. That is one thing I, 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 I am guaranteed because 20 years and I'm here. It is not a death sentence. That is, that is First, firstly, I have learned that there are many people who are still uneducated about the virus. I also learned that there are many people who are educated about the virus, but would, 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 would still use it just to try to hurt you. Um, in doing research, research on the virus, I found out that once you stay, within my research on the virus, I know that once you stay on your medications, you are unable to transfer the disease to other persons. During, during this very difficult time in my life, I I started getting a, a, a close relationship to, to, to God, to Jesus. 
Christ, I had to accept him as my Lord and Savior because my, I felt like my back was against the wall and there was nowhere else to go. And I walked the corridors of my workplace for many months, holding the hands of Jesus Christ. He had to hold my hand to carry me through this very difficult time in my life because there was nowhere else for me to go. So that is where I, that, is where, that was the beginning of me building a relationship with God. God has done a lot for me over the years. I have always seen the works and his marvelous works and wonders during the course of my entire life, I should say. Um, I always knew how to reach out to him because I was taught from a very young child who God was, although I went astray. And I was able to use God as a place of safety on many occasions to cope with, with, with different situations. And in this situation, over and over and over and over, he has, I have seen how he have, what he have done for me and how he have pulled me through. You know, um, God, he gave me peace, joy. He taught me how to be kind. He taught me how to be patient. He taught me how to be loving. This is something that I, I, I was unable to do because of the, the, when I found out of my status, all that bitter feeling and, you know, that, that revengeful feeling and that animosity, I was able to, I was able to cope by, by holding on to God and he, he, he just taught me of his ways and his works and his wonders. He, he, he taught me of his, of, of, of his unfailing love, the unfailing love that he has for us. God is using me as a vessel to continue to teach others uh, about the virus. Um, in May... 2003, no, why are I saying 2003? <laughs> in May 2021, I, I walked, I resigned my job. I was a government worker um, on the list awaiting permanency, and I just ran out. One of the reasons being is because I was so confused after the COVID-19 virus came about. And the response from people here and people saying, um, you know, you have an underlying disease, you know, um, do, do, um, uh, and they, they, they were discriminative, I should say, because knowing that I was, a person with an underlying the disease, people started to pull away and be scornful, even more scornful towards me, telling, their, telling themselves that if it is the first person to get to pick up the coronavirus, it's going to be me because I have the weakest immune system. You understand? So it became really difficult for me to be there. I was, I was feeling like, I, I, I began feeling like I, I, I was, I, there was nowhere to go, you know. Um, I went home in, 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 in this time and, and, and just lie down basically on the, on the chest of God, I should say, because when I, when I lie down there in the night, you know, the only thing I could do because of the hurt and pain I felt from what people did, and the things that were, the rumors that were spreading was cry night after night after night after night. 
And when my daughter, as my daughter finished secondary school, I just resigned because there was no need really for me to take any more of this. I, I didn't have school books to buy, so I said, Father God, I would find a way. You would find a way for me. And I was so hurt that I just walked out. I just, I just left. Presently, I, um, I open as a catering um, business. I am an excellent cook. I think I mentioned that earlier on. And, and because of my, probably because of my personality and when my customers, it, when my customers come to me, I tell them about my virus. I relate, I relate to them of my, my status and it has been a way for me to get through to the public. I used to do the, the food on a, on a daily basis, so people will come and purchase from me. And it was an entry to, 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 to get to talk to people and share the knowledge that I have about the virus. Um, I, I now only went to catering only because um, the place where I was at, um, I had to stop selling. So it, 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 it hurt a little bit because, you know, dealing with that everyday thing and dealing with people on an everyday basis now comes down to, um, it now comes down to I only doing catering. I also do a lot of others and ends, a little jobs to, just to make sure that my children and I can survive and pay the bills and you know so that is what that is what I I do now odds and ends and that catering is something that you know people really love my food so that is where I'm at at this point in time in terms of of, of work along the along the journey I have met um, different people, many different people, and people who I have lost a lot of people, and I have met and gained a lot of people. I should say, um, the direction that God has taken me in, I I met people who really were genuine and loving and supportive and really counsel and advise me. And I would just like to say thank you for being there, you know, because without support, you really feel alone. There's a number of people I would just say thank you to. Firstly, I would like to give God all the glory, all the thanks, and all the praise for being here today. Without him, I was nothing. I would like to thank, um, I would like to thank Evangel Temple for <laughs> helping me build my spirituality. Is there where it, my spirituality started because, you know, it, 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 I, I had to put myself in a community with people who loves you, shows you love in order to cope with the situations that I was facing. I would love to thank my family who have always been there from day one, from day one. And without that family support, it is really tough. And I know that there are a lot of people with the, with the work that I do now and talking to different people, helping out with, the, with people who refuse to go and get medicated. Um, treatment for the, for the virus. Um, there are many people who do not tell their family of their status. And I, I would like to say that family support, it really helped me and is very important to, 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 help, to help with the helping of coping with the virus. Um, I would like to say thank you as well to the 10th Street 
um, Barataria Ten Street crew because these are. The, uh, it, these are most of our childhood friends, you know, and they, 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 everybody chipped up and, and thing to make today happen for me. And I really appreciate, appreciate them and I love them very much. I would like to say thank you to Miss Marva Shepherd. This woman stood beside me like a mother and, you know, really advise and encourage me um, to be here today in everything that I did. She was supportive when I was up, you know, trying to tweak this thing in my brain at night. She was there after two, after three in the morning, you know, keeping me company. How far are you going? How are you going? You get this word correct? You, 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 how are you feeling? You know, so I just want to say thank you for her support. So I would also like to say thank you very much to Fresh, the creator, the person who is doing the, um, the photography of this video for me today because I, it, it, it was a very last minute and he, um, my finances are, are not full hundred and he agreed to do th this video at a reasonable cost for me so I cannot leave him out. I just want to show my appreciation and love to all of those who are suppo um, supportive towards this day. And I would like to say thank you very much to the people that are viewing this video. You all are very important as well. You understand? To the people that are viewing the video, I would like to say thank you for viewing and listening to my story. Thank you very much.